What makes a Jackson a Jackson? Solid player guitars. At the end of the day, this needs to be something that is inspiring to play. I mean, they're just the most playable guitars. For me, it's the sound, it's the tone. I think I could plug in any Jackson, whether it's an entry-level beginner model, all the way up to the most custom shop of custom shops. I know I could plug that in, and I'm gonna get a tone out of it. What makes a Jackson a Jackson is the quality, the quality of the woods, the quality of craftsmanship. I'd say low action, thin back shape. It's just gotta be fast. This is a brand new, very, very sweet Jackson American Series production model. I think any guitar player probably has their own little thing they do when they pick up a guitar and know like, okay, like this thing feels right, it feels good. I was like, that's gonna work. And then y'all usually throw in like a... My name is Mike Shannon, Principal Master Builder, Jackson Charvel EVH. I've worked for the company since 1980. I saw the birth of all the Jackson models. I guess I'm not good at anything else because I'm still doing this. <laughs> I started working at Charvel when we just did bolt-on bodies, bolt-on necks, and um, pre-neck through the body stuff. Jackson is actually the first custom shop. Other people call their custom shops the first custom shop, but truly Jackson was because we basically did any paint scheme. You know, we would match different types of wood together and hand select the wood and uh, put them together from there. We got into building neck through the bodies like in 81. Well, neck through was something like not a lot of companies were doing at the time. A lot of companies did set necks or most people did bolt-ons, probably easier manufacturing. We just wanted to get into the neck throughs where it's like one solid piece. We did some early ones that were like a star body shape I can remember. We did Randy Rhodes Concord, which was real popular, which we came up with the headstock and stuff back then. The soloist was created from uh, what the bolt-on dinky was back in the, in the days, all through the early 80s. It was a 22 fret. We wanted to make a 24 fret that looked like the dinky. If you have your amp and it goes to 11, it's even better, right? So if you have 24 frets instead of 22, it's got to be better. The first ones we did were like, these are going to last, and they've lasted over 40 years now. I think this guitar has stood the test of time because it is a classic, traditional type shape. It's been a shape a lot of other companies have copied. The four decades I've been building these things, I would hoped this would get to this point. And then right now we're walking into the American Soloist Mill where we have our dedicated CNC's, a dedicated area for clamping, for gluing, and the whole shop. My name's Adam Erig. I'm a senior NPI engineer here at Jackson. This is the first production model in years that Jackson's had that's fully dedicated. It has its own dedicated line, dedicated people, so it's separate from the custom shop, separate from the master builders. The process is, uh, at least for the American soloist, we had a chance to start all from scratch. That's very rare here. When we first started a little over a year ago working on this project, it was me, Louis Salgado, and a mother fellow engineer who works on this project too. His name's Eric Esparza. We basically like locked ourselves in a room and we just said to ourselves, how are we gonna do this new version that hasn't been done in a high level production volume? And how are we gonna make it better? I like to say any engineer can reverse engineer a guitar. I wanted to capture the OG specs from Mike Shannon like what makes a Jackson a Jackson. It means a lot to him, it's very sentimental because he designed it. This is like the OG soloist and here's why. Talking with Mike Shannon, I got with him, went over the body perimeters. I took the old geometry, just made sure everything was clean. He's like, perfect. Now the headstock, we've been using a headstock and he says, I have an OG headstock. And I go, yeah, but that was the OG headstock. And he goes like, no, this is the one, I have it. I can't really call it the OG headstock, so I call it the Holy Grail. 
So Mike Shannon has the Holy Grail headstock, and I said, trace it and send it to me. So we traced it on a piece of paper with the tuner location, sent it to me. I reverse engineered it, put it in the 3D model, and that's that's what you have here. So that's what's cool about this is, is you have an, an OG soloist here. One of the issues that came up, and I'm pretty proud of this, if you notice, this guitar doesn't have binding. So if you don't have binding, when they cut fret slots, they usually cut them with the saw, and it goes all the way through. And then you either fill it with putty and paint, but eventually over time it's gonna shrink and you have a little seam line on the sides. So if we're not gonna do binding, and I don't want that because it's a pet peeve, we mill the slots. So each fret slot is a little pocket. The tangs are cut as if it had binding. It's like the binding's built in. The whole thing with the three-piece neck through, so usually at Jackson, it's a piece of wood that goes all the way through, a piece of wood on the back, and the two sides. On the headstock, it's actually cut around here, and it's called a scarf joint, and the headstock's a separate piece. This is a true three-piece neck through, so it's three pieces of wood that go from the headstock through the neck, all the way the thickness of the body, then the two alder wings. So that's when people talk about like sustain from Jackson's and neck throughs. That's how you get that. Sustain is from a neck through construction. This reminds me of a look back at what Jackson was when I was growing up. And I think that's really cool. It's got this, this total nostalgia factor. Though it's doing it, uh, if I may relate to cars, in sort of a resto mod way, where it's sort of taking the best and the, the aesthetic of, of the older guitars, but then innovating, like we have come a long way in 40 years, and sort of subtly innovating where it needs to, but I like it because it's doing it in a way where it maintains the look. First of all, truss rod adjustment right here. It used to always be there, which is a terrible place for it. This is the superior place. We put it on my guitar, my guitar, and then I see them appearing on this. Just pointing that out. Dunlop dual design strap locks. These are a win-win because they work with any strap. These are Lumen Lay side dots. Guess who had these first on the Jackson guitar? That's right, this guy here. But <laughs> these are modern touches in all seriousness that really add to, to sort of quality of life. My hope for this is that we get a Jackson guitar in the hands of more shredders. That it just keeps growing, and I'm sure it will. And like I said, I want one of those. The solo is very important to me. It's one of the first Jacksons that I've seen. It just feels like a badass strat. Way better, obviously, but it's like it just feels like awesome. It is exciting to me just to see this doesn't fade away like some other guitar companies have faded away over the years, and this is becoming super strong.